Iced coffee, the cornerstone of our summer. Generally, when we brew iced coffees, we use ice to chill the coffees. And when we use ice to chill the coffees, we have diluting the coffees. And therefore, when we are brewing an iced coffee, we really have to think about how to maximize the extraction so that when we dilute it, it's not going to taste watery. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how we can brew and maximize extractions and so we can have the best tasting iced coffees. I'm going to show you guys one of the simplest ways to make an iced coffee. So today's brewer of choice will be the Hario Switch. And if you have the Mugen Edition, you can use that as well to have a slightly higher extraction. So there's something I've been playing around with and I've been doing a lot of cuppings and everything, but when I'm doing cuppings, I notice that if I were to pour all the water into the beans at once, if there's actually no movement, you don't really get a very high extraction. And um, I kind of just scooped away some of the top, and you're going to notice that a lot of the grounds float and stay floating kind of in this mass that's in the water. And so what that means to me is that if there's no real agitation happening then there's not a lot of extracting that's going on. But instead, what's going on is the grounds are kind of getting ready to be extracted. It's kind of like when you have a tea and then you pour a little bit of water over the tea. Now, if you let the tea leaves sit in the air for like the next five minutes, nothing really happens to it. But when you pour the next little bit of water in, those first like 50, 100 milliliters is going to be so rich and so dense. So in theory, what's happening to the coffee grounds, if you were to pour really quickly, is the same effect is going to be happening. It just needs a bit more time to be ready to open up and extract. So that is what the bloom generally is for. Now, with the switch, we can actually kind of have the, the full immersion, the cupping style. You get your water in here, and you just kind of dump the initial amount. You don't even need a lot of water. Um, we're going to talk about the ratios after, but you're going to dump the initial bit of water in first, and then you're just going to let that sit. And the idea is for the liquid to just prepare the grounds, and it's just going to stay in this kind of muddled mass and float around everywhere. And so after you do that, then you're going to pour the rest of the water to flush everything out and create the agitation you need to actually fully extract the coffee. That's kind of like the second pour into the tea after you wait five minutes. And, and it's going to change how you guys see extractions. So let's quickly talk about the ice itself. Um, normally when I do dilution with, with by chilling with the ice, um, I notice that about 50% of the weight of the water that was used is actually added into the dilution. And so therefore, if you're doing like a 1 to 11 ratio, then you're going to expect your, your ice to dilute it to about a 1 to the, to the 4.5 to 5 times mark. So it brings it to like a 15.5 a to a 16 kind of a ratio. So that is generally within the grounds of, you know, what, what we'd like to to have our ratios at. I like to stay within the 1 to 15, sometimes the 1 to 16, especially for ice drinks, because it's probably where I think is optimal. Now, if that's the case, then we do want to be brewing with a 1 to 10 or a 1 to 11. So I prefer to kind of go in between and go to the 1 to 10.5. I don't know why. I use 20 grams of beans and 210 grams of water. What I'm going to be first doing is I'm going to be pouring 150 grams of water into, into, the, into the coffee grounds. Now, the way I pour it in is this is going to be boiling water and it's going to be a quick dump. You're going to try to get it out as quick as possible. Um, you could even use like a normal hot water kettle to do it and do it faster. That's kind of what people do for cuppings anyways. Um, but this way, we're going to just flood it all up and it's just going to kind of evenly distribute the pressure in between all the particles and all the grounds are just going to be ready for the second part. So the second part is going to be the next 60 grams of beans, uh, sorry, water. I'm going to do a quick gentle stir first before I start um, pouring the second time. I normally wait at least two minutes before I pour the second pour, but you know you can go up to like seven minutes because you're doing something else. And it really doesn't matter. Like I said, if there's no agitation, there's no real extraction. So um, just let it sit if you want. So 
Um, the next 60 grams, you're just going to want to move to the edges quite a bit more after the quick stir. And then as it all drains, after, obviously, after you've done the pour, you're going to give it a quick stir again. And then as it all drains, you know, you've got yourself a fairly high extraction on the coffee itself. So with 11 parts of water, you can actually extract 20% yield. And the reason why I'm focusing on 20% yield is it's just... In general, I find most coffees and most techniques, whether it's, you know, three pours, four pours, two pours, or the single pour, I, I find that 20% is kind of the sweet spot and it's a very high extraction and it's a very high point to go for. And most of the extractions kind of plateau around the 20 to 21%. And so if you're able to do that with a 1 to 11 ratio, um, you're going to get a really great cup of coffee and it's perfect for diluting with. After the coffee is done brewing, I'm going to grab myself a, I like to use a shaker and I'm going to fill it with ice and then I'm just going to stir to chill all the, the coffee. Now, before I do this, I, I always have a couple of frozen glasses inside my freezer and this way when I'm going to drink an iced coffee, I have a nice frozen glass to, to pour the coffee into. It keeps the, keeps the coffee cold and it kind of just feels nice. It's just a nice little addition to it. And that's kind of how I do a very strong coffee and then dilute it. Um, it actually tastes really great hot as well, so you can try it out hot. But um, I hope you guys like this recipe. Uh, try it out. Let me know how you guys like it. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!